Okay, so in this video I'm going to have a look at the what's called the general term or the nth term of a quadratic sequence. So I'm just simply going to look at a non-contextual type of question. I'm just going to look at some numbers. and There's no story involved. It's just a sequence of numbers here uh, that happen to be quadratic. So let's have a look at, um, at finding the general term or the nth term or the, uh, the formula that will allow me find any particular term in this sequence. So let's have a look at this sequence first of all, and let's have a look at the first difference, or the first change, or the common difference. So if I go from 11 to 17 here, I can see that I have to add 6. If I go from 17 to 19 here, I'm just adding 2. If I go from 19 to 17, I'm actually subtracting uh, 2. And then if I go from 17 to 11, I need to subtract 6. So I can see here that my first difference or my first change here is, um, the, you know, they're not all the same. So it can't be linear. This sequence is not linear, in other words. So let's have a look at the second difference then, or the second change. Uh, if I go from plus 6 to plus 2, that means I have to subtract 4. If I go from plus 2 to minus 2, again, I have to subtract 4. And if I go from minus 2 to minus 6, again, subtracting 4. So this thing here is called the second difference, or the second change. OK, so and we can see that the second difference, or the second change here, is minus 4. It's all the same the whole way along here. So therefore, uh, this particular sequence of numbers is said to be uh, quadratic. So what we have to do now is find a formula that will give me any particular number in this sequence. So if I want, for example, t100, rather than um, trying to work out the next term here and the next term and the next term and the next term, one after the other, which is going to take me quite a while to do, what I'm going to do is work out a formula called the general term or the nth term. I'm going to work out some kind of rule or formula that will allow me find the hundredth term or the ninetieth term or the millionth term or whatever it is. So how do we do that? OK, so let's start. Now, with uh, quadratic sequences, um, the general term the general term will look like this. Uh, it'll be Tn anyway. We want to find any particular term number, so it'll be Tn. Um, it'll be An squared plus Bn plus C. So it'll look like this. An squared plus Bn plus C. <clears throat> so what we have to do for this particular sequence here is we have to find A, we have to find B, and we have to find C. They're the three variables that we have to find. Once we find A, B, and C, we put them in here, and that will be our formula for this particular sequence of numbers. Okay, so how do we find A, B, and C? Well, the easiest one here to find is A. What you do is you look at the first difference, the first, or sorry, the second difference, I should say, uh, or the second change, and you just simply half it. So A here is just going to be, so we can start, A here is going to be half the second uh, difference. So half of minus 4 is minus 2. So you just put minus 2 in there. So this is our formula now at this stage. So this is our general formula here for any particular quadratic sequence. You've got to work out A, B, and C. We've worked out A by just simply halving this second change or the second difference. So now we've got to find what B and C are. How do we do that? Well, <clears throat> we've got two unknowns here. So we've got to really find two equations. We've got to write down two equations. And then we're going to use simultaneous equations to work out those two unknowns. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to have a look at t1 and we're going to have a look at t2. Now you can use any particular term to do this, but usually if you use the two smaller ones, the two smallest ones, um, the, you know, the numbers are small and they're easier to, they're the easiest ones to use. So let's do that. Um, so we're going to start with t1. Now t1, t1 is 11. We can see that t1 here is 11. So let's write that down. So t1 is 11. Now, if t1 is 11, that means if we look at this formula here that we've developed so far, we find that uh, 11 
will be equal to, remember we're doing this one here, we're doing T1 is equal to 11. So I'm saying T1 here is 11, that will give me minus 2. Now I change the N here to 1. So the N here and here will change to 1. That will be 1 squared plus B times 1 plus C. So 11 is T1, 1 is N, so change the Ns to 1. Now let's just work that out. That will give me, let's see, 11 is equal to 1 squared is 1, so that will just be minus 2 times 1, which is minus 2. B times 1 is B plus C. Uh, okay, you add 2 to both sides to get rid of this 2 on this side, and I will end up with um, 13 is equal to B plus C. Okay, now this is equation number one. This is my first equation here that I'm going to use. Next thing I'm going to do is exactly the same thing again. I'll just do it over here so you can see what's going on. So now I'm going to do T2. So what was T2? Let's have a look. Term number two here is 17. So I'm going to use T2 is 17. So T2 is 17. So let's do that. So that means 17, I'm going to use this formula again here. Remember, this is the formula here we're using. So uh, T2 is 17, so that will give me 17 is equal to minus 2 times. Now, N in this case, N in this case, I changed to 2. So I must change this N and this N to 2. So that will give me 2 here, squared, plus b times 2, plus c. Okay, so let's just simplify that. That will give me 17 is equal to, now you've got to square this first, 2 squared, remember, BOMDAS or BIMDAS, whatever version of that you use, you must do the powers first. So 2 squared will give me 4, and then minus 2 times uh, 4 is minus 8 plus b times 2 is 2b, and then I've got c here as well. <coughs> so that'll finally give me, if I add 8 to both sides, just to get rid of this 8 on this side, bring it over here in other words, that will give me uh, 25. 25 is equal to 2b plus c. Okay, so now I have my second equation. This is equation number 2 here. So I have this equation here, I have this equation here, two equations, two unknowns, I can do, use simultaneous equations to work out those two unknowns. Remember, all we got to do is find B and C, and that will give us our completed formula. So let's do that then. Okay, so let's write down our two formula. Uh, first one was um, B plus C equals 13. This is equation one. And I have 2B plus c equal to 25. This is equation 2. So if I look at these, I've got a b and a 2b, uh, both positive, and I've got a c here, and I've got a c here. So what I'm going to do is change this sign to a minus. And the way I do that is take equation 1 and multiply the entire equation by minus 1. So I'm going to take um, equation 1, and I'm going to multiply that by minus 1. So that will give me minus b minus c is equal to minus 13. You must multiply each term by the negative 1, by the minus 1. Equation 2 I'm doing nothing with. I'm just going to write it down. So I've got 2b plus c equals to 25. That's equation 2. Put a line underneath. I'm going to add these two equations. I'm going to add the terms from each equation. So um, 2b minus b will just give me b minus c plus c will give me 0, and 25 minus 13 will give me 12. So look what I've ended up with. B is equal to 12. I now know what B is. Perfect. So now I have A, and now I have B. So let's just work out what C is. So let's do C here. I'll just do that in a different color here. So I'm going to take uh, one of these equations. I'm going to take the easier one here. B plus C equals 13. So B plus C equals 13. This is equation 1. Now I'm just going to uh, substitute in b. I know that b is 12, so I'm going to put 12 in here, plus c equals 13. 
so I need to subtract 12 from this side, subtract 12 from this side. That will give me c is equal to 13 minus 12, which is 1. So now I have all three uh, variables. I've worked out a fairly easily at the beginning. I've just worked out b, and now I've worked out c. So let's write down our um, final formula, our final rule, our final general term, our final nth term. So if we look back up here, we started with Tn uh, is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. We worked out that A was minus 2 by halving the second difference. And we've just worked out what B and C were here. So I'm going to write this down again, substituting in B and C. So let's do that. So um, we have Tn is equal to... Um, the Tn was equal to minus 2n squared, wasn't it? Minus 2n squared. We worked out that b here is 12, so that's plus 12n. And now we worked out that c is 1, so that's just plus 1. So here's our general term, our nth term, our formula, our rule, whatever you like to call it, for any particular number in that sequence uh, up there. So for example, let's just do one. If I want to find the let's say the tenth term, we'll pick a reasonably low one, it doesn't really matter, it's the same for any particular term. We want to find the tenth term, so we want to find t10. So n is 10 here, I've changed n to 10. You put in minus 2, put in 10 instead of n, I'm going to square it, I'm going to take 12, we're going to multiply it by 10, I'm going to add 1. So that will give me minus 2 times 10 squared here is just 100. 12 times 10, 120, plus 1. <clears throat> minus 2 times 100 is minus 200, plus, uh, I'll leave it at 120, plus 1, and that will give me, let's see, minus 200 plus 120, uh, that will give me minus 80, plus 1. And then minus 80 plus 1 is minus uh, 79. So the tenth term in that particular sequence there will be uh, minus 79. Okay, so that's it really for uh, quadratic sequences.